Great to go, people. Great. My name is Victor Baradogbarago. Today I'll be speaking on the topic I call lessons from USSRO and other Eastern European bloc. You see, uh, USSRO is the uh, Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, of which uh, comprises about 15 uh, ethnic groups that were in that country. And uh, Russia was the most populated country or ethnic nation in that country as of then. And they were so powerful, they were very, very powerful. And they were the only country that was, had, a, 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 in fact, that, were, that, 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 could, that could match the U.S. as of then. That is the power of the USSR then. Now, but because of a lot of things that went on, the country disintegrated into 15 countries of today. And this thing happened, uh, the, the total disintegration happened within 1988 and 1991. In fact, even during the time, if you could remember uh, 1989, when there was this uh, Olympic Games, no, uh, there was uh, under 20 uh, football game at uh, Madrid in, in, in this place in Saudi Arabia where uh, Nigeria played against Russia and uh, Nigeria came from 4-0 down in the second half to beat uh, USSR. They equalized the four goals and uh, also beat them on penalty shootouts of which uh, Oleg Salenko he scored a goal. And uh, that Oleg Salenko was also part of the Russian uh, a team that beat uh, Cameroon in USA 94. And out of the six goals that uh, Russia scored against Cameroon, Oleg Salenko scored five goals in that match. So it was only when Roger Miller came on in the second half that he was able to score one for Cameroon. Now, all during this period, during that time in Saudi Arabia when they were playing that football, when Nigeria won, they call it the miracle of Daman because it has never happened in football history. There was crack in the USSR then. There was crack. So a lot of things was not going well. Now, the, U the Russians were the most populated uh, ethnic nation in that country that dominated the rest. And the Rurokin Kassila in Nigeria, do Apia Orolika, do dominate everything. So Abana Yiga called Niasi Sinken. You see, that is the kind of thing I be see in USSR up to the point of Boko Baragida and Baragida and anything low, 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 And uh, it ended up into 15 countries as we know today. Now, even uh, Yugoslavia also was another uh, country that also disintegrated into about seven countries. Uh, you also have another republic also that disintegrated. That was uh, Czechoslovakia. They disintegrated peacefully into two countries, uh, Czech Republic and uh, Slovakia. Now, but before all these things happened, there were things that were going on in those countries or in those republics that weren't okay. And that was why those countries disintegrated. Now, if you look at Nigeria, a lot that is going on in Nigeria today also happened in those countries where people were dominating each other, others were treated as second class, third class citizens. And when you look at Nigeria, you see, Nigeria would have been a very great country if we could borrow a leaf from uh, the United Kingdom, if we could borrow a leaf from uh, other countries that were able to permit. Uh, political autonomy to other uh, minorities and the rest to be able to govern themselves even if they are in one country. But Nigeria is not prepared for that. And the way Russia was so powerful, nobody thought, or the way USSR was so powerful, nobody thought that USSR could disintegrate. Nobody thought. Nobody has ever thought that they could ever disintegrate because they were so powerful, very, very powerful. So when you look at Nigeria today, people are beating their chest, this country cannot disintegrate. 
But have you come down to really analyze the situation in the country and to see why there is tension in the country and to know what to do about those situations? Because you can be hitting your chest, you are the giant of Africa, you are the giant of this, and a lot of things are going bad just as it happened in these countries I mentioned. Now, in a country where there is no constant electricity, whereby people celebrate and shout up Nepal when the light is in and it will last for three, four hours and it will go, how can there be development in that country? A country that has no stable pipe bone water, that everybody has to dig borehole, it's not supposed to be so. It's not supposed to be each home having its own borehole. There's supposed to be a centralized system of water, water system that will be able to distribute water to everybody. Now, when we all sink borehole in our homes, what is happening to our land? All these people don't take into consideration. Now, a country whereby there is restiveness, there is, there is, there is no rest, there is, there, is, there is banditry going on everywhere. How can such a country survive? You know, I was listening to uh, news the other day and where the federal government is paying Meetiala 100 billion naira for them to stop killing people. And he looked as if people are insane. Meetiala demanded 160 billion naira and the federal government gave them 100 billion naira. A country where there is justice, a country where the judicial system is working, a country where the security is working, shouldn't do such. And the people beat their chest that they will do this, and the government will keep mute and they will keep on misbehaving. Now, all these are all tendencies, all these are all, what do we call it? All these are the tendencies and all these are the effect of a, of a failed state. Now, the ripple effect of this is what might make Nigeria to disintegrate. Because if you don't look at what has happened in other parts of the world and you keep clapping and you keep glorifying stupidity, you keep glorifying foolishness, then I don't think, I don't see anywhere Nigeria is, is, is heading to. Economically, Nigeria is down. No basic amenities. How could such a country develop? I remember in the first tenure of Peter Odele, Dr. Peter Odele in River State, when uh, there was uh, electricity in almost all the villages. That time you discovered that People weren't even looking for a job anymore. People were using their creativity to bring out their own business. Businesses sprang up everywhere in the villages because people, they've seen the need and the use of electricity. People sat down and think, what am I going to use this electricity for? So I have to do something. So people were not waiting for government to give them food. But when there is no constant electricity, what do you think will happen? So when you're making your analysis, you don't just sit down in the beer parlor and then after gulping five or uh, 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 six bottles of drink, you start analyzing. No. You sit down and analyze, taking the retrospect of the past, the present, and the future. Then you can, you, 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 you can, you can concretize your analysis and know that yes, this is the point you are making. This is the future of this thing. But many people will not want to listen. And in a situation of like that, the country can never survive. Honestly speaking, the country can never survive. That government will be paying terrorists. Such country can never survive, honestly speaking. A country that glorifies uh, 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 mediocrity and hopelessness. That country can never survive. So if that country wants to survive, we must sit down and agree on how we can live together peacefully without cheating anybody, without any person becoming superior to the other. The, the reason I'm saying this is, Ogoni people, until we realize what we have, 
until we are able to take our own destiny in our hands. There is no how we can survive in that country. And Ken Saranwewa has shown us the way. And that is the way we can only go. And the Goni people will benefit. Look, Nigeria, the wealth in Nigeria, countries that don't have 80% 80, 80 of what we have, they have stable electricity, pipe bomb water, and other basic amenities. But when the wealth we have in our own country is being siphoned by people, and then you will hear, oh, don't, you are, you are speaking against the Nigeria, you are, you, are, you, are, you are giving Nigeria a bad name. Now, who is giving Nigeria a bad name? Is it those who speak against the evil that is being carried out in the country and ask for it to be stopped so that the country can be okay? Or those who sit down and still make the country dry? Who is spoiling the country's name? But because people don't sit down and think critically, they just follow, follow anything that comes, they just follow, follow. So you believe everything they tell you. You don't sit down and make your own analysis before you take decisions. So Nigeria, we must have to watch it. We must watch out. If we don't watch out, we will go the way Soviet Union went. We will go that way if we don't watch out. But we have, we have a unique country whereby we can give power to everybody, everybody, political autonomy to every ethnic nation, and we grow at our own pace. We develop and contribute something to the center, and Nigeria will be a great nation. But when we don't do that, look at the, even our colonial master, the United Kingdom. Look at the way they are. They have Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and England. So what is wrong with us? This is the fundamental question we have to sit down and answer. But when you keep clapping and keep following people that are driving you the wrong way, then they are driving you into a ditch. They are driving you into the gutter. And at the end of the day, you'll be carried away. So Nigeria, we have to sit down. And the Goni people in particular, you already know the way to go. You already know the way to go. It's time we don't cry anymore. It's time we begin to decide. We begin to move on that way and so we have shown us. So at the end of the day, we can arrive at our destination. And we will be happy and our people will be glad. Thank you and God bless you.